A couple of the details that we show here are actually not specific to the system. They should, that's just good practice, you know. It's not that you only have to do that if you use solitaires. And if you use a different membrane, you don't have to use it. No, this is just good detailing. And uh, one question I sometimes get is, ah, what, you know, would 90 mil nails be okay for fixing it? Um, good practice is to get your, your screw plan. And it was showed there before, like depending on elevation, height of the roof, overhang, and so on and so on, there are different forces. Um, I don't take a chance there. I always get my plan. I make three or four copies so that everyone on site has a copy. I go through it with the whole crew because sometimes it can be a little bit uh, confusing. You have those different areas with different loads. And typically around the perimeter of a roof you need more screws than in the middle of it. So um, it's a learning curve even for me. Once I, didn't, I, I did not explain it good enough and the team was just going with the worst with the worst case scenario where there were screws specified every 300. So we ended up with I don't know how many thousand screws on the roof. I think that's absolutely bomb proof because they just <laughs> went with the perimeter like and a good deal for ecological building systems because I had to order another 10 packs of screws or something. <laughs> So yeah, read it carefully, go through it with the whole crew, make sure everybody understands it. It is really everything in it, the illustrations, you know, about suction screws, shear screws, and just follow it. In this scenario here, we'll have two different screws. It is a... Uh, 140? <laughs> 140, 160. It's a 140 screw for a suction screw, and a 160 screw for the shear screw, because obviously, the, 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 the angle makes it longer, like, you know, um, yeah, just get the screws, get the button, and uh, oh, depending on your key detail, really nothing fancy about it. Then for the shear screws, this is a, it's a handy, it's a handy tool. It gives you the angle of 60 degrees. You have it in your pocket. Put it on here. Start it. And put in your shear screw. And then you get your pattern, like every 1.2 meter, every 700, every 900, whatever it is. Typically, the two screws are about 150 array, roughly, and yeah, that's about, about it. And then the shear screw would be slightly longer. Do we have another one there? Yeah. Um, it's actually not hard driving them screws. You remember the 500 mil long screw? Uh, Dave and me, we did the job there on that particular project. And uh, it was this exact battery drill. Because once you threw the button, there's very little resistance in the board. And even if, if, even if the screw was longer, and then you go into the timber, whatever, like 40, 60, 80, 100 mil, that would be on your on your sheet then as well. And uh, a normal battery screwdriver will drive it like, yeah. As, uh, actually I had, I found it a bit funny when Uli said, oh the advantage is there is no nail sealing tape needed. Who, who of you has, has heard about nail sealing tapes? <laughs> right. Hands up? <laughs> okay, because Uli is kind of the next step already, like, you know. What was, obviously what is true is, very often, more often than not, the nail through the button here creates a hole in the membrane, 
and you get a leak, you get a hole there. When I do attic retrofits, if I go into an attic, I'd say 90% of the attics that I in, uh, inspect, I can see a watermark where the slate button is nailed onto the rafter. Because there's two things come together at this point, and both are not good. Um, typically in Ireland, you have your slate button only. Any water flowing down pulls up nicely, sits there waiting for an opportunity to escape. What's the closest escape? Through the old bitumen felt, through the nail hole, into the rafter, and into the attic, basically. So by having, <coughs> so that's one thing. Another one is, it's actually, it's, a, it's another one, it's, it's a funny one. It was in attic as well. It was the case that the two slate buttons, oops, just about missed the overlap of the membrane. So there was a slate button here mm -hmm. and a slate button there. And I've done the attic insulation, this and that, and on a windy day, I actually heard the membrane flapping all the time. And I was like, Jesus, that's annoying, like, you know. It, I was just installing it. So I thought, while I'm up there, I just glued that down. So I had a tube of Orcon with me, glued it down, sticked it down, finished the job, happy clients, all good. Got a feedback, thank you for the warm attic, thank you for the warm house. But what, what I'm really interested in, how did I stop that annoying noise? <laughs> so they were actually almost more graceful for me stopping that flapping and lapping. Um, I wouldn't say then for the insulation, but it was a big part of it. You have a ventilation button down here, won't happen. It's, it's just small things. Also, you have your design ventilation, obviously, on top of your, of your uh, 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 wind tightness membrane, roofing failed, <coughs> and water can flow down unobstructed, and you can have a full filled rafter insulation all the way to the failed. Um, it, it really only has advantages. And still, on the jobs that we do, if we fail the roof, we always use the nail sealing tape. And the nail sealing tape whoops, is basically just a kind of a, is it but you? But you, yeah, but you, but you tape yeah. that we <coughs> apply to the, you know, just stick it on to the buttons first, peel it off. put it down, nail it. And the way the tape is kind of designed means if you stick, stick a nail through it, I do it with a screw, actually what really seals the nail is that The nail brings a bit of the tape with it. Oops. No, it brings a little bit into into the hole, and it and that's how it kind of it's self sealing and seals seals the nailing hole. Then um, again, in Germany, you have classifications depending on where the house is. Dep if you're on the northwest coast of Ireland in Sligo. Uh, exposed to the sea, you would have a class 4 roof. A class 4 roof means you have to have nail sealing tape and you have to have sealed overlaps. You, you wouldn't get away not doing it. I'm not aware that there's something similar in Ireland, but I think roof class 4 would apply to half of the houses here. Yes. <laughs> <But it's not. laughs> and it is really because of driving rain and we don't have, in, in Germany it would be uh, the snow it's a bigger problem because it's so light, you know, it kind of whirls around and snow kind of whirls up easier onto the roof again. On the other hand, Ireland is the only, one of the few countries in the world where you have rain not only horizontally, but sometimes even <laughs> backwards. <laughs>